All right. Welcome to Tips for Making Virtual Presentations. We're so excited to have you here with us today. Our presenting speaker is Barbara Bolt. I am Jasmine Patton, the Director of Communications and Events at the Southfield Chamber of Commerce. With us also, we have our Executive Director, Jason Blanks. I will turn it over to you, Barbara. Please tell us a little bit about yourself and help us with tips. We need them right now during this COVID crisis on creating amazing virtual presentations. Thank you so much, Jasmine and Jason, for having me today. This is fantastic. I've been doing quite a few virtual presentations, so I guess it's a good thing that I wrote a blog on tips for how to do that. For those of you who don't know me and who have not had, the, had a chance to meet me at this point, my name is Barbara Bold, and I'm an executive communication skills coach. My specialty really is in the presentation skills space. That's what I love the most. I get really jazzed about helping people become uh, awesome presenters. And I hope that I will be demonstrating what I'm preaching today, uh, because of, this is obviously a virtual presentation. And there are some things that are different between virtual presenting and presenting in person. Some things apply to both circumstances, but what we're gonna concentrate on today are those things that you need to think about if you, like me, are being asked to present your business virtually, you might have to do a pitch, uh, but you, we all have to continue to get the word out about ourselves, even during this stressful time. Uh, so hopefully these tips will help you as you are asked to do this. So we're going to talk about two key challenges that I see when we present virtually. The first one is my circumstance today. For the most part, you can't see your audience. It's very common. Now with Zoom, there are opportunities to see people. Uh, and actually, that can be a little distracting sometimes. However, oftentimes, we're speaking to a camera and we can't see anyone. And that can be disconcerting if you're used to standing in front of a room full of people. Uh, one of the things that happens is that you don't get feedback from people. So you don't know if they're listening to you or not, if they've tuned you out, if they're getting your message. So it can be a challenge to not be able to see the audience. The second challenge that I've identified is this idea of audience engagement. Audience engagement is always difficult. We all know that if we've, been, if we've ever stood up in front of a room and tried to keep people's attention. However, when we're virtual, it's very easy for people to simply tune out completely. If you can't see them, you don't know if they're on their computer, if you don't know if they're on their cell phone. And the statistics are kind of amazing. It's very, very common that people are multitasking when they're watching a webinar, even when they're on a virtual meeting, they're often doing other things. And I know for myself, it can be very difficult to just stay concentrated on what the person is saying. So this means that getting our message across becomes that much more challenging. So we're gonna go on to a couple of different audience situations. It may be that they can see us, or it may be that they cannot see us. So it's the same, you know, we can see them, they can see us. This can happen in a few different ways, but some of the time it may be that they only hear our voice. So I've broken the tips out that I'm gonna give you today for these three different circumstances. The first set of tips are tips that apply pretty much in any situation. The other set of two sets of tips will be for the circumstance where they can, I think I did can't see you first, and then where they can see you. So there are some tips that are specific to these two different kinds of situations. So first of all, let's take a look at the tips that apply to all types of virtual presentations, just whatever the circumstances about whether or not you can, they can see you. The first tip is to keep your presentation short. It's not appropriate to try to deliver a one hour presentation via Zoom or via WebEx or whatever the case might be. It's simply too long for people to keep their attention at, on you in this, in this kind of a situation. Uh, you're gonna find 
I found this yesterday on a virtual meeting. I was standing for one hour and I was tired. I was sore. I was not able to pay attention. It wasn't just a presentation of one person. It was more of a meeting kind of situation, but people have a limited ability to pay attention in this context, in this kind of situation. So do remember less is more is always the case, but particularly in a virtual situation, keep it short. I would say no more than 30 minutes of content. And then if there's Q&A, that's fine, that's more interactive. But do think about how much information you can effectively deliver when you're communicating virtually. The second tip is stand as you deliver if possible. Energy is different whether we're standing or sitting. And my preference is always that we stand when we present partially because it frees up our diaphragm to support our voice. Our breathing should be coming from the middle of our body. And if we're seated, if we're crunched over in any way, we're not gonna have the ability to breathe properly and really push the air behind the words. So standing is the best posture always for presenting, whether people can see you or not. It's the best way to go. The third tip, for any kind of virtual presentation is to use lots of signposting language. And I'm gonna tell you what I mean by signposting language. Signposting language is language that helps your audience understand what is coming next. It's always good to use signposting language. I teach it in when you're presenting in person, no matter how you're presenting, you want to give some idea of what's coming up, what's coming next. And then as you change from topic to topic within your presentation, you want to also give a signal that you're leaving one topic and you're moving on to the next. So it's language like, that's all I have on this kind of tip. Now I'm going on to the tips where people can see you. So it's just helping your audience stay with you. And also that language triggers people's attention back to you, no matter the circumstance. So using this signposting language that is, are these little banal phrases that would seem unimportant, but the brain clues in. I always say that the most effective signpost to get people's attention is when you say, in conclusion, that's the one that everybody loves because they perk right up, oh, it's almost over. But that's an example of a signpost. In conclusion, that's all I have. All of those kinds of things are, are, and if anybody wants a list of signpost language, I can, I can send that out. So just let me know. I'd be happy to share that. The next tip uh, is this idea of creating intimacy with your audience through language. So this is the tip of using you and your. For example, if I'm talking to you about your presentation, it's your presentation. You are giving the presentation. So warming the language with the you and the your or the we and the our. If you're talking to a team, if you, are, if you wanna be inclusive, then you wanna use language uh, like we, we're doing this together, this is our target, these are our goals. That kind of language is more important when you're virtual because people can't see you or they may be not be able to see you, they can only hear you. So using language in this way can help you create a connection. Presenting virtually, and we did this today actually, is this idea of preparation. You need definitely to prepare and also to test out your technology. With a virtual presentation, Technology is always important, isn't it? Whether if you're presenting in person, you have to make sure your slides are showing, you've got to make sure the clicker works. There are always technical things to check. But in the case of a virtual presentation, if you don't have the technology, you don't have a presentation. So it's extra uh, important to see how your slides are going to show. What are you going to be able to see? What are they going to be able to see? Can they hear you? All of those things are very important. 
your internet connection, the stability of your internet connection is important as well. And I just noticed, I got the little sign across my screen just a minute ago that says your internet connection is unstable. So I may have frozen on you for a moment. My sense is that right now, the internet is being so hyper used that all of us are having some connection issues. But as best you can, you wanna make sure that your connection is gonna be stable and stay with you so that you don't have a lot of interruptions during the presentation. Other parts of present, uh, making sure your equipment works, all of those things are important as we prepare for the, for the virtual presentation. Another key thing to remember in virtual presentations is that you need to eliminate as much as possible any distractions. This means pop-ups for your email, dings, all of those little noises that machines make. Silence your cell phone or have it out of the room. You do not want these things to be interrupting your flow and the audience will notice that and be distracted by that. So you're trying to move, remove as many distractions as possible uh, between you and your audience. No rustling of paper either. Uh, you don't want to have like be rustling notes and looking around. Another, th uh, another thing to think about is where you're facing. You need to be facing that camera. And I may say that later on as well, but I can't, it, you can't be looking over here. You have to be looking here. Another tip, and I'm lucky today to have Jasmine from the Southfield Chamber helping me out with this presentation, is don't go it alone. It's very difficult to manage a webinar or an online presentation all by yourself. You need someone who's monitoring time. You need someone who's monitoring questions. You need someone who's managing the visual screen that you can see and that they can see. So you definitely need help when you're doing a virtual presentation. It helps to have uh, somebody backing you up and being your assistant. So that's all I have on all the tips that are for all kinds of virtual presentations. We're now gonna move on to the tips that I have suggest for when people cannot see you. The, the real challenge here is that you've only got the voice to work with. They're not able to see you visually. So your voice it becomes very, very important in this situation. You don't have facial expression. You don't have any opportunity to gesture. You don't have anything else to use. So let's take a look at some of these tips for when pretty much we've only got our voice to hold people's attention. One tip is to change it up and keep it moving. And that means probably having a few more slides than you're used to. When I built this deck, I actually put in extra slides that I might not have added if I were in person in order that you're not just looking at the same screen all the time. It's not good practice in virtual presenting to have one slide and, and talk about it for three minutes. People will lose attention. So you've got to keep changing the slide in order to keep people engaged. There is also this idea of using polls, quizzes, and those kinds of technological things to keep your audience engaged. And that's not a bad idea. Uh, have a poll question, and have people raise their hand or give an answer. That's another place where you need your assistant because you need somebody who can calculate and then show on the screen what the outcome is of those polls and quizzes. So if you're going to use them, make sure you've got backup. Make sure you've got that assistant working with you. Another option is to have a guest speaker or a co-presenter. This can work well. You can tag team a presentation. That way people don't just have to listen to you. There's another voice. There's another face if they can see. Oh, well, they can't see in the circumstance, sorry. Um, however, the one thing I will say as a caveat is that if you do do it with someone else, particularly if people can't see you, resist the temptation to just talk over each other or make it too conversational. People still need to be able to understand when one person is speaking and when the other person is speaking. It needs to be distinct. I don't know if any of you have ever listened to a podcast where it's two people kind of wittering on and ah, nah, nah, nah. it becomes annoying to me anyway, when there's too much what I call chatter between the two people presenting. 
So it's fine to have a guest speaker and turn it over to them or to have a co-presenter and say, now Jen is gonna tell you about X, Y, Z, but you want to make those transitions between speakers very clear and very distinct because otherwise your audience will, will find it annoying. A couple more tips when they can't see you. As I mentioned, your voice is critical when people cannot see you. So you need to infuse your voice with passion and energy. I hope I'm doing that today. That's my intent. You need to have vocal variety. You need to be taking your voice up and down. You need to have volume there. Your volume needs to be appropriate and you need to be stressing key words. All of those, your intonation pattern needs to be spot on. So think about how you use your voice and really juice it up. That doesn't mean ham it up or overly exaggerate, but you do want to make sure that your voice is a voice that people are going to enjoy listening to for however much time you have with them. Another tip regarding your voice is to speak more slowly than you might normally. You want to be, what, speak at what I consider a measured pace, which is pretty much the way I'm speaking today. And you can plan in pauses or use pauses. Pauses can be a very effective way to pull the audience back to you, particularly if they can't see you. If all of a sudden things go quiet for a second or two, just about that long is enough they're going to perk up. Oh, did, is it over? Did they stop? So they'll, it'll bring them back to you. So slowing down and using to you, learning to use pauses effectively is another tip. So those are all the tips for when they can't see you. Now we're going to, I'm going to share a few tips for when people can see you. Like some of you can see me today, I think. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I hope so. So the tips for when people can see you are obviously related to what you're doing on the screen. So you need to be maintaining eye contact as best you can. I know that I'm looking a little bit at myself today, which is a little to the left of my camera. So you may see my eyes shifting. But as I mentioned, you definitely don't wanna be turned sideways. Sometimes people do this in meetings, in virtual meetings. The camera's here and they're looking over here. And they're probably looking at their big screen, which is what I'm looking at right now. But if I'm looking at my big screen, I'm not looking at you. And it's very disconcerting, as, you, as I just demonstrated, when the speaker's not looking straight ahead. So you need to be looking directly into that camera. You also want to keep your body still. You do not want to be moving around. You want to be very still in front of your camera still on your feet. Uh, gestures are fine. You have to raise them up a little bit and you don't want them in front of your face, obviously. This is a little tight for me today because they told me I had to raise my desk a bit to be looking straight at the camera. So now I have a limited space in which to use my hands, but I can still make a few gestures up here. All right. So we want our gestures always to be intentional and helpful, but we do have to raise them up when we're, when we're on uh, on a virtual presentation. It's very distracting if you're moving around a lot on video. I watched a, a video webcam presentation not that long ago where one of the presenters was, you know, looking all around and just moving constantly in the screen. That is really distracting to your audience and, and frankly pretty annoying. So you need to stay still. Another, a couple of other tips, you should wear some fairly neutral clothing. They don't recommend plaids, uh, loud stripes. You can, color is good. You should avoid black. There's a, it apparently swallows you up. So some color is, is good when you, when you choose your clothing, but you don't want anything too loud and distracting. Ideally, you should be lit from above. And today I am not uh, because I don't have one of those lights yet, but I'm gonna invest in one. I've got a light right here off to my left that is lighting my face. But you can see if I turn this off, I become very dark in the screen. And I've got a window over here, so I'm kind of lit from one side. 
you do need to think about the lighting uh, when you're doing a virtual presentation. The other thing that's key is to think about what's behind you. In my case, I'm in my office, I've got a bookshelf behind me, which actually plays pretty well for who I am and what I do. But you don't want it to be terribly messy. I, I looked at it, I watched a video not that long ago for a class that I was teaching and one of the young man, men was standing right in front of a bookshelf, but it was a disaster area. <laughs> it was, stuff was out of place and there were things hanging around and doesn't look nice. So either put something very neutral behind you, like a blank wall with a picture on it, uh, but you want to definitely manage what's behind you. My last tip about what to do when they can see you is uh, maybe an obvious one, but you definitely want to smile as much as possible when you are on video. I always talk about not grinning like an idiot because we don't want to be like the people in the uh, airline videos, our airline safety videos, which are saying, as we make a water landing, this will have, yeah, that's inappropriate and too much. However, it is good to smile intermittently, and particularly when you're finished, when you're going to take questions, you want to be having a very pleasant, neutral, or smiling look on your face. It's interesting to watch yourself, if you've never, you know, video yourself, to see what your facial expression is, even in neutral. Is it, are you scowling? Are you, sometimes people just have an, an, a default uh, facial expression that isn't terribly relaxed looking or pleasant looking. So do get aware of what your face looks like when you're on video and you're not speaking maybe even, to see, you know, do you need to adjust something there? Do you need to fix something there? So those are all of the tips I have today. And I really, again, thank Jason and Jasmine for inviting me to make this presentation. I have given them the blog post that I made this presentation from to post online so that you will be able to have all these tips at your disposition. And I'd be very, very happy to, uh, to take your questions. We have several questions here, Barbara. The Please. first question is, do you suggest or do you have any suggestions to overcoming the feeling of being self-conscious in front of the camera? With knowing the possibility that your message is easily shared, how do you suggest overcoming the fear of stepping into a virtual space? So be more, maybe more afraid of virtual spaces than um, in-person spaces. Correct. I think it takes practice. I think you have to do it a few times where you're not on I, what I would suggest is recording yourself, giving the presentation to Zoom by yourself where there's nobody there, recording it and watching it and saying, well, how did I look? How did I sound? What was I doing? And then the more you do that, the more comfortable you'll become. It's one of those things where you kind of have to get a little bit used to seeing yourself on video. Like right now I can see myself. And I'm quite comfortable with that because of what I do. But if that makes you uncomfortable, you just need to break the ice and do it three or four times and you'll get used to it. You'll be okay with it after a bit. So I would say it's a matter of practice. Wonderful suggestion. Our next question, you mentioned vocal variety. Do you have resources for practicing vocal variety? Oh yes, I do. <laughs> it's funny because I've just been working with this with my students from Switzerland that I saw last month. And what I suggest is finding a text that you can get excited about. And what I often suggest, one of the texts I use in my teaching is Steve Jobs commencement address at Stanford. It's pretty short, but it's very jazzy and you can really like ramp it up. And what you do is you take a piece of the text I would, I would break it into pieces. I wouldn't try the whole thing at once. And you just do this alone if you need to, but you just read it with as much emotion and passion in your voice as you can muster. And you really exaggerate it. Like, and I don't have the text in front of me, of course, but it's, you know, I know one of the things is stay, uh, what is it, stay something, stay foolish. I, I'm, I'm not thinking of it, but the point is, on your own, read something that you can feel very passionate about and just exaggerate the heck out of it. 
get loud, get corn, not corny, corny, but do things that you wouldn't do in front of an audience and really work with that voice, really go up and down, really get a feel for where you want to put stress on a word. What word do you want to stand out in that phrase? And by doing that in an exaggerated way, you will then naturally begin to have more music in your voice. And part of it is you'll simply know what your range is. You want to figure out how loud can you get, how soft can you get, how, how much passion and emotion can you put into that reading. And then when you're just speaking naturally, it will, you'll have more to work with as far as uh, getting that music into your voice. I love that suggestion. <laughs> speaking of vocals, we have another question. Is there a volume level that should be considered when we when recording? Uh, that's a little, I don't know exactly how to judge that. I would say again, possibly recording yourself is going to be the best way to understand how loud you've been when you're when you're speaking. And it's going to probably depend a little bit on the size of the room that you're in, whether or not you're going to get any echo. I don't know if you're getting any echo from me. This room has pretty much stuff in it. I would think not. So experiment with that and, and record yourself and see if you feel that the volume you're speaking at is appropriate for the circumstance. Yes, with practicing, we'll be able to adjust that. So that's a great yeah, question. Absolutely. Too. So we have multiple questions asking the same thing about what are your thoughts about the Zoom background? Do you recommend using it or not using it? Um, I wouldn't in a professional situation. I, it's fun. I know like last night on the Troy Chamber call, they had, um, somebody had the beach in the back and somebody had the, you know, they have various ones. I, I think it's a little misleading. Uh, you know, you don't want to make somebody really think you're at a beach if you're not. And most of their backgrounds don't seem to me to be a professional background. It, so it depends on the context. If it's just for fun, go ahead. But if it's a professional type of presentation, I probably wouldn't do it. Okay. So basically, we'll save those for our virtual happy hours. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. All right. The next question is in regards to a script. Do you recommend a script? Or do you... No. Wow. Okay. Share with us why. Because you come off so differently when you read than when you speak. And you sound stilted. It's, there's no way around it. If you need notes... I did this the other day when I had, I did a, an interview with someone and I had certain points I wanted to make. And what I did was to take pieces of paper that were about that big, I can actually show you one, like this, this size of a piece of paper. And I leaned that, I had the, the six or seven points I wanted to be sure I made on one side. And then she had asked me to create one takeaway. And I had a little piece of paper with that on the other side. And I leaned them on my screen like i'm looking straight ahead i can just glance over here and see this very easily that's all i would do for notes and it needs to be not a script it needs to be main points keywords if you're afraid you're going to forget something put a keyword there that's going to trigger you to think about it because if you're reading people know you're reading and nobody likes to hear anybody reading it isn't natural and it isn't engaging plus you can't look at people. You have no eye contact when you are reading. So whatever you are doing, you have to know it well enough to be able to say it, to speak it out. Because the reading thing, it, it will fall flat. It simply will, you won't get the outcome you need. Thank you for that candid response. You're welcome. So we have a question in regards to when you're speaking with other speakers other presenters. Do you recommend that each individual that's speaking should have, a, should have their own picture during the presentation? Yeah, definitely. You want to be able to see everybody. And sometimes it happens, doesn't it, that when one person speaks, their photo comes on, and then the other person speaks and their photo comes on. That helps people understand who is speaking. Uh, if it's a circumstance where there's more than one person speaking and you know the audience, can't see you, then I also think you should say, um, this is Barbara, as you begin your part or you begin your 
whatever you're going to say, make sure they know who it is. It's sort of like being on a conference call and everybody has to say who's speaking when they speak. That's what I would do also in that circumstance. Perfect. Do you have speaker mentors? I know you mentioned Steve Jobs. Are there individuals that really helped to uh, assist you in mastering speaking and doing presentations along your journey? You know what? Um, there kind of aren't, <laughs> just because I did this very much on my own. Uh, I teach, and, and I guess my teaching career and being in front of so many classrooms is really where I got my presence and my ability to speak to rooms and groups. But I can't say that I've like watched videos of a certain person and I want to be like them. I just, I just do this. Uh, it just kind of came to me as, as the way my career progressed. So I, I'm sorry not to be able to say that I, I leaned on somebody, but I do like, there are certain people who are very good presenters and, and Steve Jobs is one of them. Uh, Simon Sinek is another. He's very good if you watch his videos. And there are other people out there who are quite good. I just, I've never really compiled a list, but we usually know them when we see them. Well, Barbara, we're so happy that you were able to join us today. This has been a wonderful presentation. I will allow a minute or so to find out if anyone else has any additional questions before we pass it over. Sounds good. I have Thank a question so oh. uh, that just came in. Barbara, do you know Jeb Blunt that recently went through a training session? Jeb Blunt. That is not ringing a bell. No. He went through a training session with me? It looks like that was the their, their, uh, origin of the question. Let me see if I can un... Steve, are you there? Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Hey, hey Barb, how you doing? Good. Nice and it was yesterday, right? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, I had just gone through a training session called Selling in a Crisis uh, through uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff Long. He's great. He developed his whole uh, Selling in a Crisis the bar training session. Uh, it was awesome. It was probably a situation where we are now you know, waking up in the morning and not feeling the most positive thing about ourselves. Right. And I, I went through this course and it gave me a complete new um, feeling as how I approach my clients and how I approach the selling process, understanding about empathy, understanding about listening skills. Um, as I said, it, it was an awesome uh, course from Fantastic. that standpoint. So that great. Yeah, if you and if you want, I'll be happy if you. Uh, I can look as far as an email address and send it to you to be able to. Uh, uh, I just I just thought it was awesome. That's a best fantastic. Way to well, thanks for letting us know about that. I'd love yeah. to have that link. Thank you. Sure. Perfect. Fantastic. Well, I think that we all have a list of mentors that we virtually can connect with based on this presentation and the suggestion that you just added with Jeb, Steve. Yeah. So I appreciate that. I'm going to turn it over to our executive director and president of the Southfield Chamber and allow him to close us out. Jason, are you there? Key Harris? I am. Thank you. Barbara, thank you so much for your invaluable tips this was a great session. Um, the Southfield Chamber really thanks everyone for participating and for your for your for your invaluable questions that you guys uh, offered. We have several upcoming uh, trainings that will be taking place. Uh, even uh, next week, uh, we have uh, exiting your small business, um, which is on four six uh, two thousand twenty at twelve p.m. Maurice Miller will be hosting that event. Uh, we also have our Chamber 101. We're going to be doing that virtually. Uh, that's going to be on uh, 410 on Friday uh, from 1130 a.m. Uh, and Greg Doyle, who is the Oakland County um, one-stop manager, 
uh, will be uh, co-hosting with me so that we can provide invaluable tips for those small to medium large uh, business owners on navigating uh, the COVID uh, crisis that's taking place right now. Uh, if you have more questions or concerns uh, concerning uh, the Southwell Area Chamber of Commerce, um, we have um, additional opportunities to support your business through marketing, um, business assessments, um, and also con uh, our connection to multiple uh, contacts in the community. Um, so please feel free to go to www.southfieldchamber.com to learn more about the Southfield Chamber and the services that we can provide and support your business. And thank you again, Jasmine. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.